Hello and welcome to the latest of this Business Spotlight interview series. I'm delighted today to be joined by Martin Shenton, uh, a, a sort of a stunts and safety consultant for media and TV industry. Hi, Martin. How are you? Hi. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Very well. Good to uh, good to meet, and I'm looking forward to hearing about uh, your story and, and business and what you get up to. So, with that in mind, could you give us a bit of background, please, on on that and the business? You know, how long and Oh, um, yeah, I basically uh, become a stuntman back in the 90s um, and worked um, with the industry and started part of equity and the um, original stunt register and what have you. Mm -hmm. um, and then sort of like early 2000s, um, I'd been obviously working in the industry for quite a while and found that safety wasn't the best thing um, within stunts and within the industry itself mm -hmm. so I sort of sort of started a, com a campaign really to um, try and improve safety on film and tv right. so basically I took all my qualifications for for what I did stunt wise um, and and edged them more towards health and safety so <clears throat> I become a level five health and safety consultant I did risk assessment training I did like courses and what have you I also did fire risk assessment courses and training and I also um did an accident investigation right. degree so um working on that kind of safety aspect of the whole thing was one of the main instigators of the original well, well of the collapse of the original stunt register um because that collapsed in 2016 um right. because of um safety concerns with the industry um and i put a, like a document together for like the bbc itv pact and a few other companies and um they liked the ideas of the change but the industry didn't wow. so they pulled away and said okay we're not we can't be part of your organization at, uh, as as it stands um you need to change things and it was called the joint industry stunt committee so it had a lot of people on it and the stunt register was part of that. But then the, the uh, committee collapsed and then the industry sort of went into a bit of a sort of a head dive. Right. Uh, a lot of people went independent. Um, and then the stunt register restarted itself again. But the problem with that was it was all, again, peer um, trained and peer assessed. So, again, the safety aspects were not what I would say uh, up to scratch. So we, I, well, then I started a sort of a campaign again with health and safety HSE themselves. I started working with specific um, people within the HSE and some of the industry um, leveled people like health and safety people like BBC, ITV. Mm -hmm. um, and then, well, there wasn't sort of like a Netflix was early there and, and Amazon and stuff. They've just started do joining, doing what we're doing. And so Disney, um so basically we're putting now a new safety system in place which is going to be part of chase i don't know if you've heard of chase which is um now chase is um they they sorted out the health and safety for the building industry okay construction industry um so hse got them involved so that because they're the organization that's got the the manpower and the finance to put something like what we're requiring in place so basically they're going to do the due diligence and checks and everything for all the systems and the industry itself. So that's part and parcel of what I do. Um, but all the other side of what I really do day to day is, is I work with the TV and film industry, um, but mostly commercials now. Right. Um, we go in and we go for a recce, have a look at what's required, have a look at the storyboard. I write the risk assessments for them. Okay. Um, and method statement, work out exactly what's needed, and then um, move forward, and and then is become part of their safety team on the day, or the two right. days, or three days, or whatever days they needed. Okay. So and there's a lot of commercials out there you'll have seen that you yeah. uh, um, like every day will really take notice of. Um, but that's the kind of stuff I've been doing. We have just recently done one with uh, Alton Towers. Um, wow. Another, we got to go back to that again tomorrow, um, which is the new Nemesis ride. Uh, Nemesis oh, yeah. Born. Um, so we did all the, the safety and uh, construction stuff with, well, safety for the filming stuff with the construction people and the, because there were so many elements to that as well. There was right. Alton Towers themselves, 
um, that own the site, but then the uh, company that owns the ride don't hand the ride over to Alton Towers until there's construction and the rides have been tested for like 500 hours. And right. the construction company then does their bit around it and build the bits that are needed to be built. And then it all gets handed back over to Alton Towers. Right. So it's quite a confusing system. Yeah. Um, so I did all the safety and stuff for that and for the filming and, and everything on that. So, um, yeah, that was quite a complicated one. Very similar to the commercial vehicles, Ford commercial vehicles commercial that right. had lots of elements of uh, safety in it with Sheffield Steel um, on construction sites, on airport sites, on um, bridges with loads of cars, helicopters, uh, right. drone vehicles, you know. So it's quite a complicated system. Yeah, yeah. So, quite a um, specialist. Yeah, so, I mean, just to give us a, a give a flavour of... Where, where would you be? So when you talk about the safety side of things, what kind of things are you talking about? Is it things that we wouldn't maybe notice as needing safety? Yeah. Um, I'll be a HOD, which is head of department. So I work with the main producers and the main production companies to keep everybody safe on set. Right. So if wires are, are not laid out properly or there's not got covers right. on them, and if lights are in dodgy places or they want to use something to lift a light up with, then I give yeah. them a yay or an A, whether right. they move a car or not or right okay um, you know there's, there's quite a lot of elements in there um that are needed that people just don't realize yeah no absolutely so, interesting yeah okay yeah. And then, so and how long have you been obviously you've mentioned times there what so how long have you been in business? Well, i've been doing uh, well i've been in the industry now for like nearly 30 years mm. um i have do, been doing this particular job for about 15 right um so i have also trained up people because there's obviously there's not oh, i'm quite specialist in what i do so there's nobody yeah. else that does what i do um so i've been training people up um to do this and i've got a couple of guys that are out there now that are doing um working for uh, quite big productions as well so right okay. yeah so and literally then, i was gonna the next question can be kind of you know stand out from the competition but is there is there not a lot of, or there's no one else doing what you're doing <laughs> not really it's funny enough i've got like three or four messages now so i was saying oh can you do some rams for this and do rams for that and there's two companies fighting at the moment to get me in right okay. um to use me but one wants to use me on the you know for the full production one wants to use me just for the risk assessment and the rams and then i said well i don't really do the risk assessment and rams anymore mm. because i need to be part of the production because there's been issues in the past where people have you used they've given you you've given them rams and they've just not followed them right okay um so you know and then you end up being sort of like oh why didn't this happen why didn't that so well i wasn't there didn't know anything about it so now i i insist on being part and parcel of the whole thing right okay um so they can't cut corners mm. um, and now this is what the industry standard's going to be yeah. they're also going to be um hse are going to start putting these standards in place and then the um chase will be putting due diligence together and checking people's qualifications and stuff right. and then the whole industry will change for the better but there are other people out there trying to sort out bullying and all sorts of other things that are going on within the industry too so right. you know, kind of coming together and forming like a conglomerate of people to to really take care of the whole the whole industry really oh so so it sounds like obviously you're uh, obviously very passionate. You come across you're very passionate about what you do in terms of very in terms of making sure that you know these kind of things are being looked after and people and, yeah. and everything's being done properly. So, where do you think that comes from in terms of your probably the stunt side of things? Yeah. You know, um, looking at people getting hurt and thinking to myself, you know, people, you know, people hurt getting hurt or dying on a film yeah. or a TV show, it's just not acceptable. You know. Right. It's like any any kind of work. If if you do an inherently dangerous job and you expect injuries here and there because of the way your job is, yeah, um, then fine. But all right, stunts and things are inherently dangerous, but there are ways of doing things without people dying or getting hurt. Yeah. yeah. Um, and no film or TV show or um commercial is worth somebody's life. No, sure, no, absolutely, no, no. So, there's people being decapitated. There's people being um lost limbs as people lost lives right. and you know and a lot yeah. of that's down to just not people just, not, being, not being it's, it's down to negligence it's all been down to negligence right okay. people not thinking uh not having the right experience not knowing 
the job well enough. Yeah. Um, and then just suddenly something happening where yeah. you you know, in normal circumstances you would have been able to foresee that. Yeah, sure. Cool. Okay. And then so I've got the question like what do you enjoy about what you do? Is that is is, is what is it, you know? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's everybody's great bunch. They're all smashing people to work yeah. for um, and work with. And it's just the different, doing something different every day. Yeah. You know, no day's the same. Um, yeah. No job's the same. No. Something different on every job. Um, love, it, love solving problems. Because mm. we always get quite a lot of problems come, you know, come about. Yeah. Uh, um, but... Um, I'm like a job problem solver, not a problem creator. So yeah, yeah. and so yeah. is you're saying is it major, major, predominantly commercial work that's that's, that's... yeah, it's, commercials pay better. Right, okay. <laughs> um, but you're in and out. I mean, I used to do it films, you know, six seven weeks at a time, and you're yeah. there, you're from home and everything. I just I don't like that now. It's just no. I've got my family, I've got my house and everything, got my animals, the dogs, um, sure. and I prefer to be. At home, you know, I don't mind going away for a couple of days here and there, but you know, not not long term. No, no, fair enough. So, what what's the what's the business journey been like then? I mean, in terms of since you started, oh. as you go now. Um, very um, let's say, oh, what can I what word can I use? Um, colorful, okay. um, colorful from the start to finish. I mean, you've you've gone from doing the job to finding out what's good and bad about the job then you go and find good and bad people in the job and then you end up with a fight on your hands and then you end up with a you know the bullying and everything that goes with it right as you're trying to change an industry that doesn't want to change it's it's been the job for years and why should we change for kicking and screaming but but that's what happened to the construction industry yeah everybody had to change at some point and and with with the systems in place now with things that's changing with cgi and um facial recognition stuff and different um ai things the the, the whole industry is changing massively no I mean, it, so it, you know what what and what, what was the biggest challenge or biggest resistance you you had in terms of change what, why were people not willing to um, because the old boys, it's kind of like the old boys, you know, it's, it's always been an old boys club and right. um, it's very difficult to change something that's been around for years and yeah. um, people that have been saying that why, why change something that doesn't need change and okay. because they don't see things going on or they're part of the problem. Yeah. You know, so um, and until you get a culture change, I mean, it doesn't take a lot of money to, to change the industry. It just takes a culture change. Right. Okay. It just change it, its attitude and and make people realizing that um, you are in, you know, you are um, as an adult in charge of your own safety, but you're also in charge of other people's safety as yeah. well. So you, by law, you, you should really be looking after yourself and others. Yeah, yeah. So was there an acceptance almost that that's just some stuff like that can happen and that's just... Oh yeah. Yeah, it was just yeah, why well, yeah, you know, I'm on set, I'm uh, I might trip over some I might do this, I might do that. Right, okay. You know, it's plenty of um people get sued and companies mm. get sued because of people just tripping over someone and smashing their face on the floor because of yeah. you know, sort of thing. Um, you know, and then then they try and do silly things like use running machines without hand handles for a running shot, right? Um, or without any safety around people. So right. it's coming up with the ideas of how you can make things safer <clears throat> and do the job. So yeah, right. you know, create the same effect but on a safer yeah. safer way. Okay, and then I guess in terms of building a business or you know growing a business or however you you look at it going forward what what do you what does the future look like for you and you know what do you well, think I'm on the other end of it right? <laughs> I'm on the other end of it so I'm I'm looking at to retire in a few years and right but yeah you know, just sort of leaving a little bit of a legacy a bit behind that that there was a somebody there that that could stand out and say you know this isn't right and this isn't yeah. the way you should do should be doing things and uh at least then things will change and 
things will get better. Yeah, yeah. And you talked about you you train some people up at the moment, to, or you have been. And- yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a guy that's now working um, for um, a, a safety company out there. There are people that are doing the safety and stuff, but they're not doing right. it in a similar sort of way as me. But they do do safety. Right. Uh, so there's a lot more safety companies opening up, uh, and um, it's it's sort of guiding them culturally and, and into doing checks and things like that but this yeah. new system in place will make everybody do the, the right thing anyway right so they uh, do they work for you directly or they no they don't work for me directly right. no i mean they have worked for me directly you know i've right. given them jobs to um move them forward and give right. them experience and stuff and see where things are and then i've had worked with them and worked alongside them yeah yeah um and, and um they're sort of like now at the level where they can now start changing within themselves as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And have you, uh, historically in other businesses or anything else, have you employed people in other businesses that you've worked yeah, in? Yeah, I mean, I've got, a, I've got a, my flat's being built at the minute. Right. Um, my flat's being built at the minute. I've got a couple of guys that work for me. Right. Uh, I used to have a building company years ago. That's why oh, I okay. about construction and stuff. Right. Uh, and I had Regent Park Studios, which is like a stunt school sports centre, which had daycare, um, right. which had um, after school club and trampoline centre. Right. One of the first in the country. Um, and I had like sort of seven um, people that were doing the after school club daycare. Right. I had uh, about three or four guys doing the um, sports centre part of it. Right. And uh, when I was doing the building stuff, I had uh, about four or five guys working for me doing extensions and buildings and stuff like that. Right. Okay. Cool. And when when you're looking to bring people in, I was just questions around kind of you know what quality did you look for people when you are know, recruiting? What what kind of things did you look for when? Well, when loyalty and honesty is one of the best ones. You know, if you can get someone that's loyal and someone that's honest, yeah, then everything else can be be dealt with. You know, you yeah, can yeah. train up, you can get them doing the right thing sure. as long as they uh they have that yeah yeah absolutely absolutely so and that's a just try just try and work out how you uh how you find that in people that i guess ultimately it comes from people you know oh, like that. It, it's a difficult one because you can get people that are very upfront and but then quite sneaky mm. in the background um but um deep down you know it's it does take a while to get the right people. Yeah, sure. You, you know, and, and trusting the right people as well. Yeah. So. And what would you, how would you maintain, what would you do or what have you done in the past to kind of keep keep the good people in the business? What kind of ideas? Well, being honest with them and paying them decently as well. Yeah. Um, little bonuses here and there, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and spontaneous things, you know, little things like, oh, there you go, guys, there's, uh, there's mm. some beers, have a, have a good weekend or something yeah. like that, you know, sure. and, and just giving little little surprises every now and again. So, yeah, cool. like a marriage, isn't it, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. No, it's, a, it's, yeah, you have to work it, for sure, you have to work at that relationship, and you can't just expect people just because they're employed by you to to work for you, you know, the, the bigger, the better the teams that, the, the more successful the business, right? Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Yeah, intrinsic in making sure that they yeah, you look after people, especially when you like say you find people that you can trust and are loyal and honest yeah. alongside that. Cool. Okay. And then, what would you say your biggest learning might be, or would it has been since you've been a business owner? Oh, um, accounts and things like that. Um, right. Tenancies, the way that the government do the tenancies and the change of tenancies and things like that. So, I have right. Flat. So, um, regulation changes are the biggest thing, and then people not informing you of regulation changes. Right. Um, and letting and people. I mean, the the laws are changing every day, but no one ever tells you about it. No. You know, if they do legislation change or law change or changes to certain industries, they should advertise it. They should they should put it out there, but they don't. No. Because it's, um, most of the time, it's because they want to make more money from you or they're just being sneaky to make you do something or you do something differently. Yeah, yeah. You know, the way you've done it for years. Um, and then they can, you know, they can do something about, you know, do something 
to mm. make more money themselves, you see. So, so yeah, being incumbent to understand, yeah, especially if the business you're in, I mean, every business, I guess, has regulatory yes. signs and guidance. It's, it's been keeping on top of that, isn't it? And making sure. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, like you say, and especially in areas where it does change quite significantly. Mm. And it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, health, uh, yeah. I suppose health and safety is an area that I, as well, isn't it? In terms of health, <laughs> yeah, it's a minefield, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can imagine. It's, but yeah, the more and more, you know, I suppose litigious people get as well. The the the, the more stringent you have to be in ensuring that yeah, yeah, due diligence is in, is in place. Yeah, I can be regularly over um, 50, 60 people. Yeah, you know? I mean, yesterday was. Um, what 50 extras couple of actors and right 20 crew you know you got 30, you've got like 80 90 people there yeah, yeah no absolutely a lot of people keep an eye on yeah yeah no for sure for sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah. okay and um for people that or younger people maybe looking to start up in business what would be your best advice if they were to come to ask you know they're thinking of starting in any kind of business at all but what you've yeah learned, what would it you would be Get very good um, interviewing techniques. Ask okay. very good questions, um, open questions and leading questions. If you want to get them to a specific way, but but open questions are better because you get more information out of people. Right. And that get let them talk. Let them talk about themselves. Mm -hmm. you know, um, people love talking about themselves, um, and you get more information out of them that way. Yeah. Uh, is that so, something you've learned over the years, do you feel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've interviewed few, quite a few people in the past. Yeah. <laughs> where did you, where, how did you learn or where, how did you evolve that the technique? Uh, again, it was just from people watching, really, I suppose, and, and then trying to learn off what's best ways to do interviews, what's best ways to interview people, go to interviews and see how people, in, even, you know, jobs that I've not even been interested in, I've... I've applied for jobs and got an interview and then just had an interview with someone just to see how their techniques are and okay. what, their, um, what their methods are. Yeah. yeah. Have you got any examples of some great questions that you've either had? Yes. Not yes. Asked or given or you've asked, I should say. Oh yeah. I mean, there's, um, there's questions out there where you can say, you know, things like well, what's your, what's the what's the most um intelligent thing you've done or right. what's the um most exciting thing you've done you know or um how how would you consider yourself um in a situation like a superhero if, if something yeah. happened what well, what would you do in this situation right okay yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of finding out and obviously Facebook and things like that are great these days, but mm. you see the best of everybody on Facebook and things like that, don't you? Yeah, sure, well, sure. you can be the worst, I suppose. I mean, there are some dodgy Facebook pages out there, aren't there? Yeah, I guess so. I think, yeah. But like I say, it's that inter one-on-one -on -one interaction mm. is, is vital. And yeah, great question. Yeah. Can can really help. Yeah. Is it the kind of information that you want to find out about people? And yeah, thinking about, not trying to catch people out, but thinking about maybe some different ways of asking questions to get the, the yeah. truth out, you know, or the, yeah. the real honest answers out of people for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Some good advice there. Great. Um, and then what what would you say or what has or what is inspiring you in in terms of, you know, make, from a business or a personal perspective? Um, oh, I just, it's, what inspires me is, is the, it's learning process. Yeah. You know, it's doing things differently all the time, trying new things out, um, then perfecting things as well. Yep. You know, learning as much as you can about a subject and being, you know, sort of a kind of expert in the subject, knowing, yep. your, knowing your subject is the big one. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can't be tripped up. Sure. Okay. Um, you know, it's like somebody said to me the other, yesterday, oh, we, we want to move this car. I said, we can't move the car. He said, oh, right. well, we can put some, you know, we can put some um, wheels underneath it and we can shift it further down the road. I said, no, you can't. Right. Said, Why? I said, because of the 2012 Act, if you touch somebody's property, 
you can be arrested for it because it's criminal damage or a criminal. Right. Um, you're creating a, you're creating yourself a massive problem. You know, if somebody insists that they, you know, because they don't know whether the damaged thing or you might move the thing and damaging it. Mm. And plus, um, touching a person's property nowadays is construed as as criminal damage. Right. So you can be really you got to be really careful. Yeah, yeah. So that yeah. was someone. So that was someone that on a the set. There was just a car. That yeah, they, yeah. The car was in the way. It it was, yeah, it hadn't it hadn't been moved and and right. the person had been there all day type of thing and right. it wasn't there on the recce. Um, but then you know the. the uh, locations department can't put corns out the night before to stop you parking there unless you've got right. permissions and they have to put, pay extra for that kind of permission and right move and move cars and things like that so but they right. sort of, people yeah. think the gods at some point and they think they can do anything they want yeah well yeah i guess yeah and like i say it's like stuff like that if you can um yeah get themselves into uh, yeah just a lot of trouble yeah, yeah trouble that yeah would you call yeah that you wouldn't even think about doing if you yeah, obviously didn't have that kind of information to hand. So yeah, sure. No, interesting, interesting, cool. Okay. And then um finally, just in terms of obviously sounds like you you know you've got great contacts and leads and stuff coming through, but if people want to find out a bit more about yourself or what you do, where's the best place to connect, you know, connect with you, maybe online? Um that's probably just maybe Facebook or something like that. I suppose yeah. I, I I used to advertise, but I don't really need to advertise anymore. Yeah. Um, there is a, a um a magazine. Well, it's more of a book, um, which I'm supposed to be going in this year because I'm um doing some changes to things. Right. Uh, and that's called the K's catalog, which is the industry standard. Um, but I'm not in that as yet. Um right. and I used to have websites and all that kind of stuff, but it's just a pain in the ass to keep <laughs> updating things. Right. And and uh very little work comes through all that kind of stuff. Most work comes from uh, word of mouth from me yeah. from people knowing people sure cool you know. okay. but yeah you, and then LinkedIn maybe you're on LinkedIn as well I am on LinkedIn yeah, yeah. Mm. cool okay I can find you there if you want to yeah definitely find me there yeah cool perfect okay yeah. well great Mike it's been a pleasure talking to you thanks for no giving me some the lowdown on what you're doing sounds fascinating <laughs> and uh, wish you well for the future okay you take care Thank cheers, you. cheers. Bye. Bye, bye bye